Miles Coverdale was originally an Augustinian friar. He came under the influence, however, of Lutheran teaching, and specifically Thomas Cromwell and Thomas More. And as a result, he left the order and graduated from Cambridge with a bachelor's degree in canon law at the age of 43. In his 1537 translation of the Bible, Coverdale, like Tyndale, made use of the Greek Testament of Erasmus. Tyndale's translation of the Old Testament was incomplete. So for those sections after Second Chronicles, Coverdale was the pioneer translator. For the Old Testament, Coverdale depended on a Swiss-German translation by Zwingli. His New Testament translation was a revision of Tyndale's. Coverdale's translation is notable for five reasons. One, to him is owed the version of the Psalms found in the prayer book. Tyndale had not translated them, with the effect that they were written to be sung. Second, for its quality of expression in what has been described as the felicitous use of the English language. And number three, it was the most complete English printed Bible and the first complete translation achieved by one single author. Number four, as well as being indebted primarily to Tyndale, the King James authorized version of 1611 borrowed also from Coverdale, particularly with the Psalms. And finally, Coverdale's translation was the first to circulate without hindrance from the authorities. Now, when we turn to the panel itself, the middle section shows Miles Coverdale receiving the license to translate uh, the Bible, granted by Henry VIII. It shows Cromwell and uh, two printers uh, named Grafton and Whitechurch with a servant uh, standing by uh, to the right as Coverdale kneels and receives the license. And the arms on the panel depicted are those of Henry VIII. The 1537 edition uh, appeared with the king's license and it included a dedication uh, to Henry VIII. Uh, Henry, in fact, issued an injunction to all his clergy which said, I quote, ye shall provide one book of the whole Bible in the largest volume in English set up in some convenient place within the church that ye have cure of, whereat your parishioners may most commodiously resort to the same and read it. And you can see uh, the writing to that effect under the middle panel. The bottom uh, of the uh, panel here uh, shows the effect of that injunction. Family are gathered around one of the chain Bibles set up in one of the 11,000 parishes in England. And in this way was fulfilled the, the cause for which Tyndale had lived and two years previously had been martyred. The top of the panel uh, shows the coat of arms of the Sea of Exeter, where Coverdale was bishop between 1551 and 153 before being ousted by Queen Mary. The dedication of this window is to Newman Wright Hoyles, who for many years was chairman of the board of trustees of this college. First comes the Matthew Bible, which appeared in 1537. It consisted of the Tyndale edition with some manuscript editions and Coverdale's translation where Tyndale was not available. So it was a revision rather than a new translation. John Rogers, a follower of Tyndale, was likely the person who advanced it. He was later to be uh, burned at the stake in 1555 during Mary's reign. The opinion is that Matthew was an alias for Rogers. So the same translation that had been condemned by Henry VIII and the leaders of the church in England in 1525 was in 1537 being sold in England by permission of Henry with the support of the Archbishop of Canterbury. 
It included marginal comments, woodcuts, and chapter summaries. The Matthew Bible was the basis of all later revisions. Then in 1539 came the Great Bible. Cromwell ordered Coverdale to make a new revision based on the Matthew Bible. It was more in accord with the Hebrew and Latin texts and other works consulted by Coverdale. It was great because of its typography. It appeared in 1539 and passed through seven editions in two years. An order was made that a copy be placed in an accessible place in each church in the country. In this way, people came to church to read and hear the word of God. In the same year came the Tavener Bible. As Coverdale was preparing the Great Bible, an Oxford scholar named Richard Tavener was revising the Matthew Bible. He made some changes in the New Testament. Uh, produced at the same time as the Great Bible, it was never able to rival it. It was not significant to later translations. Next in sequence, in 1560, comes the Geneva Bible. During Queen Mary's reign in the 1550s, when papal authority was restored in England, there was a ban on the, on the printing of the English Bible. Bibles were removed from churches, and their reading in public was ordered to cease. Two years after Mary's death, the Genevan Bible was produced. It was a revision rather than a new translation, incorporating, as it did, Coverdale, Calvin, Biza, and Knox. It was prepared at Geneva, where Protestants of different nationalities gathered who had been expelled from their own countries. The revision was in the nature of a collation of Hebrew, Greek, Latin, French, and German works. The basis of the translation was the Great Bible's Old Testament and Tyndale's last revision of the new. It featured a convenient size, moderate price, divided into a chapter and verse, use of italics for words not in the original, and explanatory notes. During the reign of Queen Elizabeth, 70 editions of the Geneva Bible were published. For 50 years, it was the household Bible of the English people while the Great Bible typically was used in churches. Next in chronology comes the Bishop's Bible, dating to 1568. The Geneva Bible served to show up the deficiencies in the Great Bible. On the other hand, the Geneva had sectarian marginal notes and questionable renderings. To address these issues, the Bishop's Bible was the result of a four-year revision by a committee of eight bishops under Archbishop Matthew Parker. Parker wanted to bring some rationalization to the Coverdale, Matthew, Great, and Genevan Bibles. The Bishop's Bible was based on the Great Bible. In contrast to the others, it made no notes or comments on the text. It was accepted and was placed in churches, but was not as popular as the Geneva Bible. This version was not great because a strong general editorship was lacking. This left it with an uneven quality. The second edition came in 1572, and it was the one used in the authorized version of King James in 1611.